In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about bone density. Now, it's one of those videos that actually comes as a request from a patient of ours, so we're going to talk about it and try and go into quite a bit of detail. So I've got the iPad here. There's a few points that I want to make sure that I cover in this video, just as prompts. So uh, bear with, uh, but it should be really informative. And, and it's, this is a really important topic on bone density and osteoporosis, especially for more so uh, females rather than men because it tends to affect that group of people a little bit more. So we're going to talk a little bit about how, the, how your bone density develops, how it changes with age, what points in your age that it actually accelerates, and then how things progress over the course of the long term as you age, coming up to menopause, and then little things that you can do to actually enhance your bone density activities etc and also postmenopausal what sort of activities or things can you do there where your bone density is declining and you want to keep it up because it's something that unfortunately if you're watching this video and you're a parent you can make as much of a change as you can in your kids so that, that's a really really important point of note so what's actually happening with our bones how do they develop um, essentially there's this two-way process that's happening through the majority of our life once our bones are formed and that is essentially the breakdown, which is called osteoclastic activity, specific cells of breakdown bone, and then osteoblastic activity, which basically re remodels that bone and puts it back in places where it's needed the most. And the osteoblastic activity, the building, needs to happen at certain points in our age at a higher rate than the breaking down of bone, and that's how bones develop. Now, in response to stress and strain, the balance of those uh, two sort of relationships can change quite drastically, uh, whether you're very, very active for the better or very inactive for the worse. Now, there's a few pivotal points when we're young that our bone density is being formed, and we get around about 30% of our future adult bone density formed in the ages of around about 12 to 14 girls and, and boys respectively. So it's super important at these times that we're actually doing physical exercise to stimulate the, the increased lay down of bone density. And I'm just gonna to jump to a quick stat from one of the research papers that we're looking at here, which was that, uh, this was particularly with gymnastic girls, those that did physical activity, gymnastics, for a one year period, produced 30 to 85% more bone density at the end of that period than their counterparts. And, uh, females as well in the set of the same age. So this is so important. Physical exercise is something that can have a massive impact in your future bone development. And unfortunately it comes, the, the windows that that happens, comes at times when it's the last thing on your mind. You know, you know as a child, 12, 14, you're, you're not really thinking of these things. So that age group is critical. That's at the point where we lay down the most bone the quickest, particularly during those growth spurts. Now this process will accelerate and as we reach the end of adolescence, you've generally laid down, in both females and males, you've laid down about 95% of your bone mineral density. And from there, it tends to be typically a downward spiral or a slow, gradual degradement of, the, of that bone density. There's a few things that you can do to really keep it up and I'll go through some of those now. Physical exercise is, without a shadow of a doubt, through the literature, it's showing that that is really, really important. The bones are adaptive uh, organ or organs inside our body and they are responding to stress and strain. If you don't uh, use it, you lose it. And that's something that's true in muscles, it's true in any, any skill or any, any, any sort of adaptation. If you're not putting physical stress and strain through your body within manageable levels, then you're not going to be getting any sort of adaptive change and you won't keep that bone density. Now there are some research studies and we're going to put any links to any research in the, in the description of this video so you can actually read into it more and if it is something that you're really interested in, we do encourage you to look into it yourself um, in, in a little bit more detail because it is very, very interesting and, and really, really important. Um, the actual bone density can increase if you're doing this physical activity. So by doing more physical activity through the body, that's things like running, brisk walking, slow walking doesn't generate enough impact. Um, by doing those physical activities, you're going to increase the osteoblastic activity, building up that bone density in, uh, relative to the rate at which the bones are being broken down by, by, by the osteoclasts. And you just have a favorable relationship between those two uh, processes rather than a balanced one or slightly unfavorable. As we go through life, the osteoclastic activity starts to increase a little bit more as well as other, other things that stimulate that process like inactivity, decreased levels of calcium intake typically. People tend to start to avoid dairy a little bit more as they get older so they don't get enough calcium to support that re regenerative process. 
Now there's a few things in the way of supplements as well in the research that can talk about health, but really don't get bogged down in taking supplements because physical activity shows a massive improvement and a massive health. No matter what age you are, you can take more advantage of it at certain age groups like those early teen years and, 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 and uh, 12 to 14 in, in girls and boys. But um, don't neglect the use of activity, physical stress and strain on the body. Vitamin D, a massive one, that's really, really important. So taking that and make sure you don't have a deficiency. There's other research which talks about, particularly if you're living here in the UK, supplementing vitamin, vitamin D between sort of September and March time when the days are a little bit shorter. It helps and it's something that patients coming here with back pain, they notice a difference in their general health and well-being in those months as well. And actually supplementing vitamin D in a lot of cases can make a, make a small difference um, outside of bone density as well. Next thing is calcium intake. Now this particular part that I'm going to talk about is more with reference to postmenopausal uh, women and it talks about two figures, 400 and 800 milligrams a day. That's of calcium. You can get a massive impact of, of maintaining bone density if you're getting 800 milligrams a day instead of 400 milligrams a day. It's something that you should really be doing, especially if you're not on, on uh, HRT related medications to keep your estrogen levels up because estrogen plays a massive role in the balance between the breaking down and the rebuilding of bone. And as you lose that, your body's natural production for that drops and diminishes. Supplementing that calcium to at least support what you've got is really, really important. And again, physical activity here is very, is very important in this later, later in life age group. And aside from research, just anecdotal experience here in the clinic, I find that a lot of patients, as they get towards even, even midlife, you're in your 40s, 50s, and, and maybe early 60s, because that is midlife now, people are living longer and longer these days, people make a drastic switch from physically intensive activities, in activities that involve a degree of uh, load on the spine, load on the joints, etc., to things like yoga, to things like stretching, and just general moving around exercises, swimming, etc., because it's good for mobility. But they don't actually persist with exercises that put controlled loading through the joints. This is really a big mistake, and it really does affect a lot of people when they get things like back pain because they don't have the ability to bear load, and it's something that's adaptive. And in this literature here, it starts to talk about the fact that our body always has the ability to de develop site-specific increases in bone density. That means that if you're doing whole body exercises like squats, like other activities, you don't have to have ridiculous amounts of weight. But putting some of that compression through the body in a controlled, uh, regulated environment like a gym or, or a set time at home will actually lead to increases in the osteoblastic activity, laying down more bone, improving your bone density. It doesn't matter what age you are, that stuff is important and we just notice here in the clinic that as you get older we find patients tend to move away from those exercises and just do things like yoga and stretching and it's, it's just not helpful for those sorts of things so please bear that in mind. Um, I think overall that, that's pretty much it um, in sort of summary. We've got a few key points to take away. It's so important when you're a young child uh, doing these sorts of physical activities because it really helps take advantage of your bone density uh, uh, peaks when you're laying down the maximum possible. That's 12 to 14 and a couple of years either side of that in younger people. You're, you've got 95% of your bone density for life when you're around about 20, 21 and it peaks and stops around about 27-ish. There's some variation of sexes, etc. But it's such a critical time to be doing physical activity, putting load on your spine because you're adapting and building up the framework for the rest of your life and that's really, really important. In terms of maintaining bone density and even peaking in a bit after that, physical exercise, joint specific work, putting load through the body. It's no good doing biceps, okay? Yes, you will get, get bone density here, but actually those whole body exercises with a little bit of load are going to help really build the weight bearing structures, improve that bone density, so we don't start getting osteoporotic, osteoporotic fractures through the spine in, in, in the back end of, or back third of life. Super important. And then finally, vitamin D and calcium. Vitamin D seems to be a little bit more important, so supplement that, especially here in the UK through those winter months. And then calcium again important in latter life and, and maintaining through the diet throughout our entire life because we tend to move away from dairy and, and nowadays with people being having all these intolerances, they're not taking the dairy that they need to. So you've got to get your calcium from somewhere and if you're not getting it from the diet, you need to supplement it maybe even sooner than I've discussed in today's video. 
So those are the, really the main things, the main themes. I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions or any other things that you've done for your bone density, uh, bone density scans like DEXs, etc., then comment, get involved in the, in the discussion below uh, in the comment section. Remember to subscribe. We try and put out these sorts of videos to help educate you guys, or at least you've got the starting point for further knowledge or for developing further knowledge. And uh, thanks for watching and speak soon. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. You can always get involved in the conversation by commenting in the section below and stay up to date with future videos by subscribing, by hitting the subscribe button somewhere around this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch again and see you soon.